Welcome to another video from the farm. Today, a bit of a special one, we've got permission to live here. And it's only took three years. So I just thought I'd go through exactly how we went about doing so. Now, your easiest method, the way which we've gone down, is you have a small farm. And what I mean by that is you've basically got to have 12 and a half acres of agricultural land and you've got to have an agricultural based business running on that land. Now you can also go down the forestry route but I don't know too much about that apart from I believe it's only five acres of land you need not 12 and a half to be able to conduct your forestry operations to get yourself permissions for buildings and to be able to live there but uh, maybe I'll find out some information I'll get that in another video. As you may have seen in other videos, we're predominantly a free-range egg farm, but we also have pigs as well. Now, I started my agricultural business a long, long time before I even considered getting my own piece of land. So, advantageous there that when I moved here, I already had a pre-existing agricultural-based business, which meant that I had no problems with my agricultural rights. But if you're starting afresh, you may have some issues. So, it's always advisable, in my opinion, get yourself your little business going first before you actually get your land so then you've also got an income to help improve the infrastructure of your land once you get it now there's like whole forms with all sorts of different things that are classed as an agricultural based business but you ideally want to be selling veg or have some sort of pigs and that's because they take up the most amount of our man hours believe it or not according to the government statistics and to warrant living on your own land for your agricultural business, you need to have 275 days worth of labor a year to qualify. And even though we've almost 3,000 chickens, believe it or not, the man hours for them equates to about 15% of what you need to live here, even though they are the majority of the labor on the farm. So because we're fairly diversified on the farm here, we've got pigs and a acre sized market garden also, that's added up to approximately four people's worth of uh, staying here time effectively. I'll just point out as well that those four people can be four separate households in effect. I however just applied for the one dwelling basically because yeah, it's only my family that needs to live here all the time with me. So. Uh, yeah, it was pretty smooth sailing. Believe it or not, it's an actual identical application, whether you're applying for a static caravan or you're building a modular log cabin the same as me. Now, the other thing you're going to need is a bit of cash flow because it's not a cheap process to do this. Even if you do all the application forms yourself, you're still going to be spending some money. But if you are going down the agricultural route and setting up a small farm or something, Highly advise using a local planning consultant or a local agricultural consultant to help you with the planning application because they will know all the ins and outs, all the boxes you have to tick, everything. The other reason for the planning consultants is for buildings like this, this barn we're putting up now, just building the lean to first, which I mentioned in another video. And uh, the livestock house down on the bottom field there, which we keep the chickens in, that was a result of the planning application being submitted by the proper planning advisors. They know exactly what boxes need to be ticked. But all in all, it's not an easy process, all of this. So if you're watching this video because you're thinking about doing it yourself, think about it long and hard. Like I say, you're gonna definitely need some cash. You aren't gonna be able to do this legally by just turning up on your piece of land. That's 100% sure. And off the back of that, trying to do it illegally by just turning up here using the four year rule or the ten year rule and such. You're extremely unlikely to get away with that in England too, unless you're in the middle of Wales or the middle of Scotland somewhere, somewhere where people don't walk by or you don't have any neighbours. You're really going to struggle because, as we all know, everyone's nosy in this country and yet there's a lot of people who like to get busy. So prepare for that. Don't think you're going to get away with it. Fortunate for me, I've done everything sort of the correct way from the start so I've had no real issues really my only hold up was to do with sewage for the cabin believe it or not even though there's a care home just across the, the way there that puts about 300 people sewage in the river next to us every day believe it or not I'm the problem 
Which I guess leads me on to the other reason to do it correctly straight away. Is because the people from your local council you'll be dealing with, you have to remember, are people. So if you offend them in their role, so to speak, they're not going to look favourably on you and they're going to make things difficult. I have had some experience of this, not with my local council, they all seem like fairly nice, reasonable people. It was with uh, one of the other bodies that you have to deal with when applying for things. Believe it or not, from an email I got sent, it's uh, all to do with the fact that I use my agricultural rights to get permission for the barn and the livestock house. And they didn't have any say on that, I believe, is their issue. And then uh, they've tried to cause trouble when applying for the dwelling. But when you've ticked all the boxes, it's not a lot that can be said. And I'd say, especially after the last year, don't rely on your relationship with one person in a governing body to be, meaning you'll be favourable amongst all of them, because another person from the same organisation has been here multiple times to help with some river restoration work we've allowed to happen on the bottom field. And, uh, yeah, we've got a really good relationship with him and the other people in that body, but they obviously don't talk to the people who deal with the local councils or vice versa. It's all separate departments, so keep everyone on side and you should have no troubles. So I'll just do a quick summary of what you actually need if you want to apply for a dwelling on your own agricultural land. Number one, you're going to need 12 and a half acres of land minimum. Secondly, you're going to need some sort of agricultural related business to operate on your land that's going to require you to live there. And as mentioned, you need 275 days a year worth of eight hour days to qualify for that. A bit of info I had from an agricultural consultant, I'd recommend pigs or a market garden as your most favourable reasons for needing to live on site due to man hours. Although your market garden has the disadvantage of you don't need to be there to maintain the welfare of your animals, which pigs does, as that's one of the boxes we ticked for our permissions here. And I suppose third then, you're definitely going to need the advice of some professionals because just reading stuff on the internet or watching videos like this, you it's not always going to be applicable to your circumstances and you're definitely going to need some advice from someone in your local area or nearby that's dealt with similar things. Like I say, if you just go down the route of doing things, you'll come a cropper somewhere, so you may as well do it right from the start and maintain good relationships with everyone you need to deal with in your local government. And I suppose number four then, even if you're doing it illegally or you're going down the proper path as we have, you're not going to be able to do it for free. A lot of people are going to attempt these sort of projects or lifestyles with small starting capital, basically, and you're going to really struggle. You need some venture, like a farm, to bring in income for you to build out the place, or you're going to need some starting capital in the first place. Like I said, fortunately for us, I've had the business built up years previous to even getting the land, so I had a good constant stream of money to be building things and spending money on consultants and whatnot and advise, like I say, doing the same, have a stream of income before you even need to talk about the land making money. And ideally, if your stream of income then transgresses over to your own land and makes you a little bit more money, like mine did, because we're no longer paying rent for somewhere else, it's even better, isn't it? So that about wraps it up then, I think. I think I've pretty much answered all the main points on what you need to know. But if you've got any questions, drop them in the comment box and uh, I'll get back to you. Don't forget to give this video a like and if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button with the bell notification. Until next time then, bye bye.